Hey everybody, welcome to our second mini lecture on nicotine and caffeine. This time we're talking about um, mechanisms of action of nicotine for mini lecture number two. So um, the receptor that mediates the effects of nicotine is a, the nicotinic receptor. Um, nicotinic cholinergic receptors, sometimes abbreviated as NACHRs, um, these are the cholinergic receptors that are going to uh, be receptive to nicotine. Uh, you might remember these from our acetylcholine chapter. If you're a little hazy on how these receptors work, you can always go back and look at that. Um, these are ionotropic receptors, right? So they govern a uh, sodium channel. Um, they are made up of five subunits. If you remember our little meerkat example, these are these little protein meerkats that uh, form a pore in the cell membrane that will allow sodium to pass through when an appropriate ligand uh, binds, be that acetylcholine or, in this instance, nicotine. Um, this allows sodium to pass through rapidly, creating an excitatory response. So it's an excitatory ionotropic receptor type. So that's our nicotinic receptor. Uh, so nicotinic receptors, if you remember, we identify cholinergic receptors based on the subunits that comprise them. Uh, and depending on what subunits make up the receptor determines its affinity for various types of ligands. Uh, so the affinity of a receptor for um, nicotine depends on the subunits that make it up. The composition of those receptors differs based on what region of the brain you're in, what part of the neuron you're on. If you're in uh, nervous tissue versus muscle tissue, a number of different things will vary the receptor composition. So uh, based on these subunits, uh, the individual receptor will have differential sensitivity to different agonists and antagonists. Uh, and high affinity receptors are located throughout the brain and autonomic ganglia. If you don't remember much about the distribution of cholinergic neurons, or what their relationship is to the autonomic nervous system, you might want to go back to the acetylcholine chapter and take a look at that. Um, so the last little thing we're going to talk about in this uh, part is the biphasic action of uh, acetylcholine receptors, specifically those that are activated by um, nicotine. So initially, when nicotine floods the synapse, it produces persistent activation of these uh, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So a lot of uh, depolarization events is sodium flows in. You see a lot of depolarization, excitation of these neurons. Uh, but with repeated uh, stimulation, these receptors can undergo desensitization. If you remember back to when we talked about this in the acetylcholine unit, certain agonists can sort of overwhelm a synapse and acetylcholine receptors are prone to desensitizing. Well, they will go into an inactive state where no amount of binding is going to uh, cause them to open. This is in response to kind of like an overstimulation state. So while they're desensitized, we're in sort of a nicotinic receptor block where there's no signaling happening there. Uh, this is similar to some of the muscle relaxants we talked about in the cholinergic chapter. Um, so it works in the same fashion, but it's a different receptor affinity, right? We're not talking about the same drug. So nicotine has a different affinity for different receptors, so it's causing receptor block on, on a different family of receptors, but basically the same idea um, that's causing a uh, desensitization event, which is going to uh, actually reduce the amount of signaling. This is what's responsible for that sort of biphasic action where we have uh, excitation and stimulation initially, and then receptor block and lower stimulation after that. Okay, that's actually it for uh, this little mini lecture. We'll see you next time.